We are going to start this new venture called the Girl Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast. How many of you have a podcast, want a podcast, listen or watch a podcast? Someone told you to do one. So we're taking imperfect action and you guys are watching it in real time. So I'm super excited. Are we right? We your mic oh, the microphone's right here. So I'm super excited because we're going to have our first podcast guest, Sharice B. Sharice B is gonna be our first podcast guest on the Girl, Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast. Also known as We're Building This Plane as We Fly. Okay. <laughs> So at the podcast summit with some uh, uh, Trina, there was like, you know, the Miami celebrities were at this podcast summit. Um, and one of the things that they said is like, your first episode will not be your best episode. And we have a live studio audience and we have a fabulous guest. So it can only go up from here. Like if this is what we're doing, it's gonna, it can only go up from here. So I really hope that this is a testament to you guys that it doesn't have to be perfect for it to be powerful and impactful. And I'm just so happy Cherie said yes because um, I sent a text message to a friend of mine and I said what had happened was I was supposed to have a guest but I didn't book nobody. <laughs> and she was like, I think she called me back. She's like, I got somebody for you. I was like, you do? And I was like, can they do this? And she was like, yes. And Sharice is here because of someone else's text message who could not be here today. And I just say thank you for taking a leap of faith and just being here and showing up and standing in the yes. gap. Perfect alignment. <laughs> and it's the perfect topic for today, given my wardrobe malfunctions. And some of us have some wardrobe <laughs> malfunctions today, right? You guys told me about them. So let me just introduce Sharice and why this is so important. This is why this is such a powerful beginning to this new journey we're going on. Sharice is an international certified image consultant, lifestyle concierge, speaker host of the ecosystem for beauty pros, female entrepreneurs, and high level executives. She teaches them how to show up. Don't we need to know how to show up? How to rebrand and shift from the one woman show to the CEO. I think that's a lesson for me. I'm going to say that one more time. How to shift. <laughs> from the one woman show to the CEO. Yes, yes, yes. And she is the founder of the feeling good as hell formula. <laughs> okay. Sharice B is a purebred entrepreneur, successful salon and image consulting business owner in Metro Atlanta, Georgia, with over one, two, three decades of experience cultivating diverse clientele from the new expert beauty pro entrepreneurs to politicians to high level executives to CEOs, just to name a few. And on this journey, Sharice discovered that this long list of connections, purpose-driven relationships, priceless opportunities and resources were her very own ecosystem. How many of you guys know we're developing an ecosystem yes, of relationships? Yes, yes. And this is her opportunity to serve her coveted community. After years of ups and downs and experiences, how many of us have had ups and downs? Yes. We're gonna talk about some of those. Yes. She questioned her value and belief in herself. Then Sharice realized that she had to take her business and reputation up a few notches and officially established herself as an international certified image consultant, life coach, energy healer, influencer, and trusted advisor to the elite, as well as those aspire, aspiring to do the same. And let me tell you, it was not an easy quest. While in survival mode, from her own challenging experiences, Sharice created morning and nighttime rituals that she refers to as her lifeline. She calls it her feeling good as hell formula. An accountability, discipline, and self-awareness guide to healing, evolving, loving, and living. Okay? Not the other hell. The H, healing, evolving, loving, and living life to the fullest each day. This formula has become a core principle in her life as well in the lives of the community that she serves. After a consistent seven days of putting in the work, getting the clarity, and going from one woman show to CEO, this opportunity was birthed for her to build communities and evoke 
evoke evolution and create opportunities so that she can show up, captivate, cash out in all areas of business and in life from the inside and the out. Without further delay, let's welcome our inaugural guest, Sharice B, to the girl, your brand's a big deal <laughs> podcast. <laughs> How are thank you feeling you. today? And I'm thank feeling, you so much for being here. Yes, I'm feeling special. I'm, I'm feeling very special. I'm feeling special. <laughs> that you're here because of a yes. text message from someone else. Yes, and That's absolutely. just a testament to who you yeah. are and who that connector is to us. Yeah. And I know you love to connect people in the community. So tell yeah. us a little bit more about you and what's not in your bio. Wow. I'm just a lover of women, people period, but especially women entrepreneurs. I have been an entrepreneur since I think I was nine. <laughs> I, had, I had my first paper route at nine years old. I was a babysitter. And I just always created my own money because I like money. And my aunts were hairstylists. So I remember one day I was in the salon and I saw a lady walk in, you know, looking kind of down and out. And I saw her make an exchange that changed me forever. I saw her step up out of the chair, looking and feeling amazing. And then she handed my aunt a cash. Money, we like that. A handful of cash. And I was like, whoa, that's what I, I, I want to do that because they were both happy, feeling good, making that exchange, and I was really young, but I knew then that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make people feel good, I wanted to make them look good, empower them. You know, I couldn't articulate it at that time, but my way of articulating it was at track practice and basketball practice, I'm like, hey, come on y'all, let me get y'all together after practice. <laughs> Let's make, let me do your hair. Let me get your clothes together. You know, and that was the way I started out. I love it. So yeah. this podcast is called The Girl, Your Brand's a Big Deal. Yeah. And you work with high profile professionals and politicians, essentially helping them make their brand a big deal. So yeah. tell us a little bit more about how you support people with image consulting. And maybe we can go into some more information about how we can up-level our image. Yeah, so most of my clients, so I was in a salon. And I happened to attract a lot of high-level women. And I also had women who were a little rough around the edges as well, right? I was from the rougher side. <laughs> so I was grateful to attract all the women. So what I noticed in the salon was it was all types of women, right, from all walks of life. And I love that because the type of women that I had, there was no judgment. You know, the women who were more educated, you know, more just, you know, seasoned in life, they always embraced the other women who were a little rougher around the edges, younger. They were always pouring into them. So what I noticed as my career moved on, I was from Dayton, Ohio, and I moved to Atlanta, and that's when I started my image consulting business. And I realized, oh, either way, these women still have the same challenges, right? No matter who they were, who they knew, how much money they made, where they came from, all of them were challenged with self-esteem, mm. right? How they saw themselves, how they felt about themselves, how they valued themselves. And they might be on a different level, you know, so some of the women would look at another woman and think that oh, she has everything. Oh, she has the husband, she has the education, she has the cars, the houses. But I'm on the outside looking in, and I'm seeing that she has the same self-esteem issue mm. that you had. So what I realized was I needed to bridge that gap. You know, I have to figure out a way to help these women see and understand their own value. Help them see themselves more valuable, see who they really are, you know, and how to move about the world so that you can be more powerful. Tell us, let's unpack that a little okay. bit about the self-esteem. Yeah. Uh, what were some of the things that they were saying about themselves with these self-esteem issues? I, I, all of us, you know, feel 
not the best all the time. Yeah. I don't know about you. Yeah. But let's let's unpack that a little bit. What were some of the things that were coming up for the women that you were supporting? Yeah, simple things like, uh, I can't stand my stomach. Uh, I hate my legs. Uh, I hate my hair. I hate my eyes. I hate my nose. I wish I was this. And I, excuse me. I wish I was that. And it would come up all the time, no matter how amazing they look, no matter what stage they were on, before the stage, after the stage. Oh, how was my stomach looking? How did I sound? How did I, <laughs> you know? And what I realized, like I said, from the outside looking in, that was fixable. That's always fixable. But those words that you keep speaking over and over and over to yourself, it's fixable too, but you don't realize how much damage, mm, mm. you know? So if you've been doing this from childhood, which you most likely have, mm. you know, you've heard it from somewhere, right? And you're still repeating it after all these years, you believe it. So a lot of people wonder, okay, so I got the degree, I got the husband, I got this, I got that, I'm still not happy. You know, I look good, you know, I have all the things, but I'm still not happy inside. If your subconscious doesn't believe in you, and people, when, when we get to talking about that subconscious work, people get woo-woo, but no, this is God work. This is God work, right? But... For me personally, I feel like that's the work that they left out yeah. for our people. Yeah. You know, like some of the books in the Bible that they took out. Yeah. Mm. That's the work, learning about your subconscious and what your people told you, what your culture told you, what your teachers told you. You know, that's what you believe. But you can fix that too. It just takes a deep inner work. So when you said, the inside out, mm -hmm. I was like, ooh, she, she has no clue this conversation we're about to have. Okay, I'm here for it. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, it's a, so when I realized that my work was so much deeper than styling people on the outside, you know, I just, I was analyzing people. I'm telling you, every person I was coming in contact with, I could see through them. Mm -hmm. I could see their eyes. I could see what they were trying to hide. And guess what? I was the one helping them hide it. Because mm -hmm. what do I do? I style you, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it became an obligation to me and a mandate to me to help you understand, like, it's bigger than this. It's deeper than this. You going on that stage, right? And you putting on this great performance but you get off the stage and you hurting. Mm. And I'm big on energy exchange. Mm. I know for sure mm. that we exchange energy, mm. right? So when I was going through my hurt and pain, that's where my feeling good as hell formula came from. I was going through divorce. I had a couple of miscarriages. You know, business was crazy. You know, just the whole cycle of life that was crazy. I realized that I was coming in contact with men and women every single day, but I was hurting every single day, but I had to show up. I'm that type of person, I'm up at 4 a.m. in the morning, on time, ready for you. But I was hurting, and I had to figure out, like, there's no way I can exchange this energy and pass this on to these people that I am serving, right? I'm like, I gotta figure out how to protect me so I can protect yeah. them, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? So that's when I realized I had, I was always, you know, into the meditation, and then I was struggling with, you know, so can I meditate, can I pray? Is one different than the other? You know, because in the church, the church taught me, I don't know about anyone else, that meditation was not of God. Mm. So I had to start digging deeper and understand what was of God. This meditation and this prayer is for me. I need to meditate. You know, I, and, it, and it is prayer. It is a form of prayer, right? Mm. So when I got up in the morning, I had to tap in to my meditation, to my prayer, my visualization, my, my affirmations, you know, my EFT, my tapping. Like, that's how bad it was because I'm not sure if you ever had your heart broken. Mm. We talked about this, Linda, 
<laughs> you know, we talked about this, right? Nicole, is Nicole still here? I have some, listen, let me tell you something about showing up anyway. It's so much deeper. That's why you have to do the inner work. Because you have to show up anyway, regardless of how you feel or how you look. It's your mandate. When you said, I want to be a leader, an influencer, an entrepreneur, someone that's going to change lives and shift lives, it's your mandate to show up, right? So this is why that inner work is so important. So the inner work for me was my meditation. It was my visualization because it was, I literally was in the salon shampooing people and getting them gut punches. <laughs> you know, the gut punches that had my knees, <laughs> you know, wobbling. And I'm like, I can't do this. So this has to be another level of like super conscious repetition. I, I have to protect my thoughts. I have to protect literally every thought because these thoughts that are coming through me right now are taking me down and I can't go down on these women, <laughs> right? So that is when I realized like you, you gotta do this work, it's continuous, it's repetitious. You know, no one taught me that. They taught me, oh, you pray one time, you pray and you know, Pray and let it go. and this, No, it's work that goes with that. Mm. And I feel like that's how we were tricked out of our gifts and our powers. You know, it's repetition. It's okay. It's okay if you have to walk the street talking to yourself. It's okay, right? Thank God we have the ability to see, hear, think, and feel. Right? I love it. What was the moment that you knew you transitioned from hurt to healed? Um, I would say when I had to, I had to speak at an event. It was my first event and um, money making. And we gotta talk about that too if we can okay, real we quick. Add that to the list. Um, it's two parts to that. It was my first money-making event. It was sold out, and it was amazing. Everything was going good. And I was, like, I was getting a phone call. It was so personal. You know, had to do with my marriage. Right before I walked on stage. Mm. Mm. I was like, for real? For real. And I knew then I had to Pull it together. I had to tap in. I had to tap in with God. I had to tap in with source because what was I there for? I was there to shift the people's minds. I can't be. You came here to get shifted. And that's my goal. If you come in my presence and you don't get shifted, we got a problem. If I don't shift your mindset, if I don't shift the way you feel, if you don't walk away from me feeling something you've never felt before, I didn't do my job, period. And that's when I knew that I was walking in my healing, still walking in it. You know, but you say, people, so many people say, oh, you know, I want to be a life coach. I want to be a relationship coach. I want to be, they have no idea. The set and the entrepreneur, right, 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 right. It's, a, it's a different ball game. And can we go into the mm -hmm. cash? Mm -hmm. yep, <laughs> so what I re I've been an entrepreneur most of my life, and I realized how important making money was. I, I realized how so many people were suffering because they weren't making enough money to support the dream, or to even eat. So I, I made cash every single day, right? As a hairstylist. So I could always eat. I could always get gas. I could always help somebody out with a little cash. I was the cash girl. Sharice, you got a couple dollars? Sharice, you got some gas money? Yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. Not realizing, you know, you're mishandling money, you, you know, you're mismanaging money along the way as this entrepreneur. That's a whole other level of work. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a whole other level of work. But the number one thing I realized, no matter if you are a corporate person who was very smart and intelligent, moving into entrepreneurship, if you've been a longtime entrepreneur, whatever the situation was, people needed to make money. That no money will humble the H E double L L out of you. Especially if you're a real educated person that's been making a whole lot of money and you decided to go do your own thing because everybody said it was cute mm-hmm. and it looked good. These stages look good. They look good. Right? <laughs> it looked real good. All these people showing up looks good, but your cash ain't right. It's not adding up. Mm. Mm. Right? That's deep healing work. Right? That's that subconscious work. It's things blocking that money. That's why I know I'm called to a deeper level of work. We're going to look good and we're going to get to the money. We're going to feel good and we're going to get to the money too. So I want to hear more about this. What, what is blocking women from being a big deal and making big deals when it comes to their money? What's blocking them? I believe personally, like I said, your subconscious beliefs. What did mama tell you? What did grandmama tell you? What did the church tell you? What did school tell you? That you can only do it one way. How many people believe that it's more than one way to get to freedom? How many people believe that they are avoiding, and listen to me and follow me, avoiding the one thing that will free you up? Uh, Let me tell you what avoidance looks like. Avoidance looks like fear, procrastination. Oh, I got to go to work. I, I, I I can't leave that money. I can't leave him. I can't leave her. I don't have time. That's what avoidance looks like. Can I put myself on blast? So, I'm glad you enjoyed it. We're all guilty. This podcast, the the level of resistance to getting someone to interview, but because of divine connection, you were supposed to be here. Yeah, absolutely. It took me forever to message people. And there were people like, oh, I can do it. And I I just ignored them for like weeks. Mm -hmm. There's some type of resistance when you're going to the next level. That's the sign. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's the sign. So when you feel that resistance, do it anyway. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. And, and get the people around you that are going to push you, mm. the people who are going to hold you accountable. Not people that are going to enable you, oh, girl, uh, okay, wait, wait till next week. Maybe mm. next month. Maybe you need to get your hair done. Maybe you need to find you a podcast room. You better set that camera up in your house, Just in that car, it. and start your first podcast. Stop it, stop it, stop it. You are so gifted. Mm. You are so gifted. And you don't need no, no permission from nobody. To do what you gotta do. You were born with the gift, mm. period. It's your birthright, period. We were supposed to start it this way. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Have you found value? Has this spoken to you? Have you been blessed? As we wrap up the first episode of A Girl, Your Brand's A Big Deal podcast, what are some words that you want to leave our audience with today? Uh, I would really like to say just dig deeper Mm. and deeper and deeper. Oh, we need shovels. And deeper. The things that are uncomfortable for you, Be uncomfortable. We want to be comfortable. Comfortable is cute. Mm. Mm. And you know, we get all dressed up and come to the events and show up for each other. But the real transformation is when you decide, when you make a decision that I'm doing it anyway, regardless. I don't care what anyone thinks. I'm my biggest cheerleader. I will be that. And one thing, one more thing, there's, um, I learned, I'm I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with human design. Yes. 
And I've been into this a while ago. And to me, these are some of the secrets that have been kept from us, right? So I knew, so I'm a manifesting generator, right? If you're familiar at all, my job is to inform, okay? And watch the people show up for me and charge them when they show up with ease and flow. With ease and flow. I've been out here all my entrepreneur life trying to make stuff happen. And nobody could tell me that little secret. Nobody, what happened? So those are the, that's why I say you have to do the deeper work because as you continue to do the work, life will unlock more work for you. And it's continuous. There is no rest. Just be, be happy with the work, okay? Be happy with the work with and keep work. working yes. on yourself. I will say that I'm a manifester. And um, I knew it before I took the test. I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I am. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to accept it. Yeah. That the words that we say out of our mouths yeah. come to pass. Yeah. That's, yeah. A big ob that's a big obligation yeah. and a burden yes. sometimes. Yes. yes. So when you say, we're doing the podcast yeah. on October 14th. Mm -hmm. And look how it just unfolded for you. Things happen when you say it out of your mouth. I'm shaking. I'm like, listen, I'm just, you, you watching our human design, you're watching us develop in real time. Yeah. So it, it's not easy. Yeah. It is scary, but yeah. we're doing it anyway. Yeah. We're showing up anyway. Yeah. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that because I, I, I understand it's supposed to be easy. Yeah. It's it supposed is. to be graceful. We it put is. things in the atmosphere and they come back to us. Yeah. How can we stay connected to you? You can find me anywhere on all, well, listen, let me tell y'all, let me be transparent with my people. I'm still a work in progress with the social media because I've been very fortunate not to have to have it. But listen, I am very, very open in understanding that this is the new way of life now. Mm. It's the new way of doing business. It's a new way of connecting and networking. And we have to get with it. Period. So I'm at Show Up with Sharice B on all the networks. Show Up with Sharice B. And follow me. Okay? And I'm going to talk to Sade a little bit later because there is something that I want to talk to you about at first, though, okay. that I would love to offer the ladies later, even if we do it you know, offline okay. later. Um, because I really I have something for everyone that I know will help unlock some things for them. Yeah. Well, I and I want to say something to you. Okay. <laughs> so I, first of all, I saw you at the podcast summit. I was trying to get oh, to that's you. that's right. <laughs> we were at the same event. Yeah. I in was, Miami. Yes, I was With trying. With podcast bros. Yeah, I was trying to get to you, but you were so far, and then you disappeared on me. It was like me, a thousand so. people. Yeah, it was a lot of people. It was a good summit, too. It was a good He event. did a great job with he that. Um, but I just want to say I'm proud of you. I've been knowing her at a distance through Chantel. That's my business partner, which is how I got here. But uh, I love your consistency. I believe in you. Because you should believe in you more than anybody. I see you believing in you and rocking it and doing it. Amazing things. I forgot you were there. <laughs> yeah. Chantel was like, oh, my business partner is at the podcast. Yeah. Program. And we didn't connect. We were both, at the yeah. reason why we're here on this stage yeah, yeah, yeah. is because we were both at an event in Miami. Yeah. And I made a commitment to do this. Yeah. And we didn't get a chance to connect there. Yeah. It was right you here. See how that works? It was right here. We can't make this stuff up. Yeah, we can't. Oh, we can't. She told, oh so keep God. doing your thing, lady. Proud There's of more you. in store. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. What time is it, beautiful people? Let's get in the middle. Thank you so much. Thank you for showing up yes. and saying yes.